Hello everyone, tonight is a, a special treat. I've been sent a little care package by another YouTuber, now perfumer, Mr. Niche Guy, and his name is James Berry. He started a brand called Suga Parfums. Um, and he, I've known him for about a year now. Um, we connected over Instagram. We were both, you know, fragrance reviewer YouTubers. And since then, he's really come a long way developing his own fragrance brand and developing his own fragrances. Uh, most of his fragrances are all naturals. He goes out into the wilderness and nature and extracts his own perfume ingredients from, uh, I guess, the natural world around us. Um, he sent me a box of eight fragrances that he's made, handmade. Uh, they're all extract de parfum. Uh, the one I'm reviewing tonight is A Man and His Pipe. It's one of my favorites. It's the first one I've smelled. And when it caught my nose, there was absolutely no way I could resist it. I'll start by saying... I am not endorsed, not paid, not anything to say this. He sent this for me to try, and I am so impressed. I am doing these reviews, and especially of this one. I really enjoy this one. Getting right into it, the story behind A Man and His Pipe was um, James's father has never really been into fragrances. His son has a perfume lab upstairs. Uh, it's a high bar set to impress him. This was James's challenge to impress his father and his uh, completed mission. A Man in His Pipe is a tobacco fragrance, a boozy fragrance, and an animalic fragrance. It is 85% natural, and I memorized that. You're welcome, James. Um, but I have to have my list of the animalics in here. It is a pretty long list. It has civet, castorium, hyrax, Siberian deer musk, and muskrat mucks. Muskrat Musk, say that three times fast. Um, it sounds like an animalic bomb on paper. It is animalic, but it's not overwhelmingly animalic. I have two sprays here. This is from about three or four days ago. This is from earlier today. And they are both still lingering. Um, now there's a few differences during the dry down. What starts in the top is you get a booziness, and that's something I picked out and talked to him about. He doesn't like to put notes of his fragrances on his website, but he, he, you know, of course discloses animalic ingredients um, for those, you know, vegans out there who, people who just want that disclosure of real genuine animalics in their fragrances. I noticed um, something boozy. That mouth-watering tingle that you get from those darker liquors, either rum or whiskey, and I told him I'm picking something up like that. Is it rum or whiskey? He confirmed it was whiskey. He uses Maker's Mark in this, which I thought was interesting, using real whiskey. So not in a quart of whiskey, but real whiskey inside of this, which I thought was interesting. And Maker's Mark is kind of, you know, I call it a sweeter whiskey, and that's what I got from it. Uh, those boozy notes, those alcoholic notes, are kind of those chimera notes where they can be sweet, spicy. Um, they can add a lot of different depths and flavors. Kind of a chameleon note, wears a lot of hats. That's what I love about boozy fragrances. Um, so my one of my favorite fragrances being Nasamato Baroanda, which is a whiskey fragrance, but not biased or partial or anything. Moving on to the tobacco note. The tobacco in here is a juicy, rich, sweet tobacco, not unlike Slumberhouse tobaccos for you Slumberhouse fans out there because this is certainly, uh, this is a tobacco absolute. This is very different than what you get in designer tobaccos. This is different than what you get in a lot of niche tobaccos. This is a tobacco absolute. This is grabbing a handful of tobacco leaves, the sweet, moist leaves, and shoving them up your nose, okay? It is very nice, authentic tobacco. It doesn't smell synthetic or artificial. It smells very real. It smells very ripe. Um, I don't like to compare He, you know, I don't like to compare his work to existing work because he's really trying to create a unique product here. But I'm just, I, I hope I'm speaking volumes about this product by saying it has that tobacco quality you would find in, you know, that very niche artist in Slumber House fragrances where the tobacco is just like, wow, it is impressive. This is impressive. Handmade, he's been doing this for a couple months. It's impressive. It's impressed me. Moving into the animalics, now this is where it's a little more challenging for me, so I'm not going to pull things out of 
my rear end and say, oh, I'm getting this. Oh, I'm getting, oh, I'm not going to do that. But what I will say, and what I do find interesting about the anamolics in here, here's a couple days old one, three or four days old, still getting them. Um, there's an interesting, and I told him, I explained it like this, it's kind of like surround sound, where you have bass and you have treble. And you kind of have these higher pitched anamolic notes, these um, wispier, more jump out at you anamolic notes, and you have these more bass anamolic notes. And I would consider the bass anamolic notes as bass. Uh, kind of the castorium, those heavier ones, those heavier musks, the Siberian deer musk. I think of, um, now maybe I'm just interpreting it wrong, but I've always interpreted civet in hyrax as kind of a treble note, um, less bassy and more um, high pitched. And I know that doesn't make sense to some people, but if you know what I'm talking about, you kind of know what I'm talking about here. It's hard to explain. Um, but what keeps those anamolics from being overwhelming is that tobacco comes on very strong along with the strong anamolics and it kind of reels it in. So it doesn't overwhelm and pull your nose one way or the other. Um, and of course you have that, it sounds weird calling the alcohol a top note, but that's kind of like the role it plays in here. Um, it's kind of that sweeter, just jump out at you, that spice just kind of highlights over what's already there, highlights over the heart and bass notes um, because it's the first to go. During the dry down, the alcohol is kind of the first to leave. You kind of get some of that lingering spice, um, but that's about all you get as it dries down. I mean, the long longevity on this is very impressive on paper, on skin, it's also impressive. Um, as it dries down, you get less of the booziness and the tobacco gradually, over the course of hours, gradually fades and then you're just left with that base anamolic. Um, speaking for me, from someone who isn't super into anamolics, this has kind of turned me towards anamolics. It's very approachable. And it's something that is complex and has that depth for those diehard anamolic fans, but there's enough reeling it in and controlling it here where it's extremely approachable for someone who's not into anamolics. My girlfriend was here this past weekend. She smelled it and she's like, I really like that. Keep in mind, she's like smelled basically my decant of Aventus, uh, Tom Ford Noir Extreme. Like just really like you're like genuine money in the bank. You're going to like this. She smelled this and was like, I would love that on you. Not exaggerating, not embellishing, 100% truth. Um, I was surprised. Really, I honestly was. I like... I was, I'm smelling it right now, just like, am I smelling this right? Is this really, like... but she liked it. And it, it, this is one of my favorites. And um, hopefully she'll be here to review more with me soon. We were crunched on time, so we didn't get to run through all of them on video together. However, I have all our notes. Um, and she really liked this one. It's a masculine. Um, James wants his approach to fragrances to be unisex. Um... And that's great, but I would say this one leans a little more masculine, a man on his pipe. But, um, you know, certainly with the anamolics, anamolics can go both ways. Um, anamolics can be so unisex. E even like those deeper bass ones, as I tried to describe. Um, so could, you know, a woman wear this? Absolutely. But I think there's a lot more I'm reviewing in here that will be more attractive to the women out there. And there's some that just generally guys might prefer. And that's probably all I have for now. I'm running out of time, but really excited to review more of these and let me know what you think, guys. Um, I'm really liking these, really excited about these. Full bottle worthy for me. I'm a broke graduate student right now, so can't quite afford it yet, but uh, uh, hopefully I'll get around to it uh, come Christmas time. Anyways, that's all for now, guys.